Um, thank you again for joining this afternoon. I'm excited to show this to you. Um, my name is Jimmy Pullett. I am the client services manager here at Fast Model. I've been with Fast Model now for almost two and a half years, um, working a lot with our support team and our sales team as well, um, bringing it to uh, Division Two and Division Three, especially. Um, but yeah, I'm going to talk to you today, especially about create, creating templates, uh, a lot of the different options that you have with that, how to do that, and then a lot of workflows, you know, especially with updating templates or how to use them during the season as well. Um, and then I'm going to kind of finish it off with a few ideas that I have. Um, you know, I, I'm, I've been given the task for this particular one uh, because I've probably made the most templates um, of anybody in the fast model system. You know, I've, I've built a lot for different teams. I've actually built um, the two that are in the system by default as well. Um, so I'm excited to share those um, with you. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get started here. Um, you should be able to see my screen. Um, it's an Ohio State Buckeyes account. Um, as well as the other part to this, um, there is within Zoom, there is the Q&A functionality. Please utilize that for any questions that you have. You know, I'm gonna pause every about five minutes or so, go over any questions that you have at that time. Obviously I can answer ones from previous segments or anything like that um, as well. You know, I wanna make sure that you're getting the content that you need, um, you know, for yourself and your account. Um, so please utilize that. I'll also have time for questions at the end as well. Um, but without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, so specifically today, we're going to be talking about scouting reports and templates. Um, so first, on the top of your screen here, you have opponent scouts, self scouts, offline scouts, templates archived. This templates tab will be the list of templates in your system. You can always manage it um, with this three dot menu here. Click there and you'll be able to delete or you'll be able to change the name of your templates super easily right here. Um, coming over to opponent scouts, you know, this is where you're going to be doing a lot of your work, um, you know, on, on scouting reports. Obviously you can do some on self scouts as well, but for the most part, you're gonna be working on opponent scouts. You'll be able to come in here whenever you're ready to clear, create new scouting reports. Over here on the right-hand side is going to be your opponents most of the time. Um, that's gonna be during the season when they're on their schedule, when you're on, they're on your schedule. If they're not, you can always choose manually. So I'm just gonna call this one template builder and I'm gonna choose um, Michigan State to create this um, particular scouting report about. Um, the game date will be the date that the stats automatically update until. Um, since we're in the process of building a template, you know, this is going to be kind of, I would view as a preseason workflow. I'm going to choose a blank template. So this is gonna be starting from scratch. Um, so there's gonna be nothing on the page. Most of the time, especially during the season, you're gonna be using the save templates and you're gonna be choosing your template um, that you wanna work from. So I would always make sure that you know you have the templates in your system on that templates tab the way you want it here, because that's what's going to be pulling in this dropdown. So let's start from scratch with this blank, te blank template and we'll hit create. So obviously, as we see right now, we have our blank, pa pa our blank page of paper uh, right in front of us. It has our header, um, for you know our opponent on our team name and the opponent team name and the date of the game right at the top. I'm going to throw just one top one tile on here just so we can kind of see um, a little bit of a difference when we go here to design. So we'll notice here on the left hand side um, that we have two different types of things. We have the tiles and that's going to be all the different tiles that we can place directly on the page. We also have our design and so that's going to be kind of the more of the aesthetic features of that particular report. Um, so we have uh, a few different themes. So the themes are going to be kind of how it looks. So that's going to really take control of how the header looks and how these blocks and stat tiles and stat boxes, they look. Um, we, have a, we have five different options here um, to choose from. So I would recommend, you know, sometime checking them all out, see which one you like the best. Um, Seattle and Alaska are two that we brought over from the previous edition of Fast Scout, Fast Scout Classic. And uh, Fast and Clean, Standard and Modern are three that we built for our current system. So I'll, I'm gonna click on Modern here, show that you know it updates. So every time you update the theme, it's gonna refresh the page, make sure everything's up to date. And you can see it just looks a little bit different. It's kind of you know a, a different crispiness to it um, that uh, Standard doesn't have. All the tiles just look slightly different. Again, they're just different ways to be able to look at the entire scouting report, just whichever one you like best. 
um, layout. This is a brand new feature that we've uh, uh, recently released for FastScout, and that is portrait or landscape. So that's going to be the way the page is shaped. So you can see if you click on landscape, it's going to go um, 11 by 8, or portrait is the 8 by 11. So this is kind of standard up and down, and landscape would be side to side. Um, so now you can kind of do your scouting reports either way. Um, and I'm going to show you here uh, when we're done a, a nice landscape template, you know, that I've, that I kind of built. That's going to be kind of one of my examples here at the end. Um, notice here under header. So this is going to manage the content that goes in your header. Um, so we have our team record. You can have that pop up. So you can see now that the record for Michigan State pops up there. And then you can manage the logos. So right now it's only the opponent's logo. You can put your logo in there or both teams' logos. And it's gonna kind of automatically update for whichever one you want. And then you'll notice the um, header. So right now we have a full size header here. Um, you can manage to have it on page one be a full header or a skinny header, or you can hide it all together um, if you want the maximum amount of space per page. Generally, I see a lot of teams do the full header on page one, and then they go down to page two, and then they do the skinny header on page two, or sorry, uh, and after page one. So that would be all the pages after that. Gives you that little bit of extra space so you can put even more content on a per page basis, um, but still keep that nice kind of uh, look with it. And then the last area here is the colors that you'll see throughout. Um, you can see if you like look at the line here under text blocks, that's a green. You're able to change it um, if you want to, simply clicking on the different colors throughout. So you notice the accent color there. I had it on green. If I want it to be red, I can change it to being red. Or you can choose any color number as well. So that's going to be the six digit hex number um, if you wanted to. So you can kind of control the way those look. And then you can kind of um, change the amount of accent there is as well, um, simply clicking there as well. All right. Um, so let's dive into the tiles. Um, I'm going to kind of start with the first couple here, which are pretty easy ones to kind of get to know and used to. And then I'll pause for questions, um, if there are any. Um, section header is going to be pretty simple. It's going to be your basic section. It's going to be kind of uh, changing to between different sections in your scouting report. Um, I Most of the time when I see this, I see this with starters and reserves, um, differentiating the two um, between personnel. Um, you can always change the size and shape of these. And what's really nice about all of our tiles is they're all dynamic like that. You're going to be able to kind of control, you know, where they are on the page. You can drag and drop. So if you want it above that text block, just simply drag and drop and it's going to go right there. And that's the same thing with all the tech, all the boxes, regardless, as you can kind of change the shape and size. Our next one here is the spacer. So what you'll notice with all these tiles is they're always going to go on up as high as they can on the page. You know, maybe you want this particular text block to start just underneath the starter section. You can hit the spacer button and kind of change the size of this to reflect that same size. And then you can use that to push it down to push that particular tile down. So now it's starting below and you can kind of utilize that. What the spacer is, is it's blank white space on the page. So it's not gonna print out. It's a good way to keep your tiles even on the page. So it's not gonna be kind of all jumbled if there are ones that are different shapes and sizes than other ones. You know, maybe some text blocks, you need more text information, other ones you need less, but you need to kind of bridge the gap between your next tile beneath that. Um, you can utilize that spacer. Um, and then we can see on the page, text block, bold, italicized, underlined. You can change the, the font size. You can change the color. You can highlight as well. Bullet point numbering. A lot of your basic word processing functionalities you can do on text within a particular tile. Um, and the last one here before we get into the stats ones is the image. So this is just going to be any, any image that you would like to upload, JPEG or PNG. Um, a lot of time I see teams use this for... Um, you know, for either team logos, sometimes you like to have that throughout, or, you know, maybe like an emoji or something like that, that, you, that people like to use to kind of describe teams. Um, I've seen a lot of different things. Those are kind of the ones that kind of jumped out to me as kind of cool ideas. Um, but again, if you, whatever you would like to image wise, you can add into the scouting report. This was a feature in our previous version of Fast Scout that people asked for a lot that we couldn't handle. So we made sure to include it in this one. Um, all right, I'm going to pause for just a second here. Um, if there are any questions, again, please, please use, utilize that Q&A functionality. 
Um, the next section here, we're going to jump over, um, jump through a lot of our stats and personnel. Um, so that's going to be a big, uh, big section to kind of go over. Um, so again, if there are any questions, please let me know. I'll pause for just a moment here. Awesome. All right, I'm going to continue. Uh, there are no questions yet, but again, I'm happy to answer any as we go through. All right, so let's talk about team stats. You know, this is our one that has by far the most options. Um, as you can see here, we have a lot of different stats. Um, for the most part, um, basketball coaches are aware of how they work and how they're populated. And we do go over how a lot of these stats are populated in our advanced stats webinar, uh, which we have posted on our YouTube channel. Um, and we'll probably be running another one or two of those here in the next few weeks. Um, so I'll kind of go over these in you know, semi-depth, um, but you can kind of see all of your different options. All of them produce different information for you and for your team um, and your opponents. What's really nice about a lot of these, I'm gonna jump over to the cumulative box score here first, is the options that you have in terms of customizing. When you're making this preseason, you might be wanting to make it over the over last season stats because maybe your first couple of games you're going to want to use it for you know looking at the 18 or the 1920 stats you're always going to be able to toggle between the seasons up here in the top right corner so maybe you want to pull up you know the 1819 stats for michigan state if it was beginning of this per, per, if this current season or the 1920 when you're beginning the next season um you'll be able to choose that right there You'll also be able to choose the games that are going to be included. So by default, it's going to choose all the games over the course of the season or last season. Um, you can choose it to be only conference games simply by clicking on the button. Um, that's going to save you a lot of time, that ease to be able to switch, you know, especially in mid-season when you want to be able to, if you want to switch to just conference games instead of all games, it's really easy to choose the games exactly that you want. You can do last five, six, four, how many ever you want to do, simply clicking there. Um, and you can also just choose the games that you want to choose. Maybe um, they played a team, you know, that was an exhibition game for one team and it wasn't an exhibition for the other team. You don't want to use those stats. You can easily unselect a game as well, and it's going to provide a custom list for you. So you can see there it's populating that. All, it'll populate the stats from all the games except the Charleston Southern game right now. Um, a nice, easy way to be able to choose the exact stats from the games that you want it to be from. You're also going to be able to customize and see the stats that you want to see. So you can see all our different stats in here. These are kind of the default ones, kind of your standard box score. You can see all the different columns listed down here. Oops, I jumped out of that accidentally. So let's go back into the box score here. Um, you'll see all the columns uh, you can kind of organize. What's really nice is if you want to change the order that they're in. So maybe, um, you know, you see a box score on ESPN, most of the time you see the points all the way on the right hand side. You can easily just drag and drop and move it wherever you would like. So now you can see I put points all the way on the right hand side and I'll show that to you on the page here in just a second. You're also able to take advantage of all the advanced stats that we have in our system as well. So something like e-field goal percentage or plus minus or anything that you would like to use, uh, you can add those in as well um, if you have the advanced stats feature in our platform. Um, so when you're ready, you can add that tile onto your page and you're going to be able to see that. Um, so you're seeing all that. Notice I have the points on the right hand side. Also with this, um, you can click on any particular column and you can sort by that particular column. So if you want to buy minutes per game, you can sort by minutes, points obviously is a, a common one. You can choose that um, accordingly. Um, it's also important to note that Everything that I'm going over, whether it's in design or on these tiles or in the stats specifically, all those things that I'm going over, save in the template. So as you, you know, select it to be sorted this way and have it on the right-hand column and to choose last season stats, that's going to save in the template. So the next time you use it, it's going to be, it's going to pull that exact same way. So you're really only making these changes once and then whenever you need to change them moving forward. So if it, you need to switch from all games to conference games or something like that, that would be the only time to do that. And I'll show you how to do that later in this webinar. Um, among our team stats options here, I'll kind of run through these. Um, we kind of saw the customizing that we can do, but you saw the, we, we have fast scout factors, 
with that, um, you're going to be able to toggle and have rankings on, kind of see also where they rank at those particular things. So if you go percentage, Michigan State is, you know, shoots 53% offensively. That's 56th best in the country. Um, defensively, they hold teams to 43% e-field goal percentage, which is third best. So you can see that they're a very good defensive team um, in terms of limiting um, the field goal percentage, the e-field goal percentage for other teams. If you want to, you can also have those rankings be within the conference as well. So you can see that they're the best offensively at e-field goal percentage and the worst defensively in the Big Ten. Um, and you can also compare to the conference average and to the D1 average as well. Um, if you'd like to see it in a chart format, so in a graphical format instead of a um, instead of a table format, you know we have a lot of different options to be able to put graphs in there. It's a great way to kind of visually change your report, so it's not all tables with numbers on it. You know, a lot of people like to utilize these different ones um, to kind of change, you know, how your eyes are looking at a, at a scouting report, kind of catch the interest. Um, our next one here is points per period um, for women's basketball. It's points per quarter. Um, Again, pretty simple here. Um, seen it probably a million times before. Team pace. Um, so this is going to be possessions per game. Um, so you can see, you know, Michigan State has 69.2. Again, you have the rankings here uh, within the conference and within Division One or Two or Three, whatever division you might be in. Um, and this is also a great one to see graphically as well. Um, so you can kind of see the difference, you know, where Michigan State is, and then kind of see the difference between, you know, conference. Um, and then the country, and then your team as well. Um, individual box score. So there's two box scores here, individual box score and cumulative box score. Individual box score is going to be for one particular game. So we see a lot of teams use this if they want to put in the box score from, you know, a first matchup or something like that, or maybe a comparative team. So maybe you've played one team and they've played the same team. You want to include that box score. You can do that um, with, this, with this tile. If you want to include it for multiple games, so like we said with those different splits, you can easily use this cumulative box score. Um, I'm going to spend some time here talking about our team stat comparison and team stat splits because I think there's some interesting things we can do with this. Um, team stat comparison is a pretty simple one. Um, you've seen it probably on box scores before uh, when you get like a printout from a team's website or something like that. Um, it's going to be pretty standard. Um, you can, again, choose the games that are going into, but you're not going to be able to customize the stats on this particular one. It's definitely designed to reflect, you know, the same thing that you've seen um, before on the on different um, box scores. The stat splits is going to be the one that's, um, you know, more customizable, and it's going to give you a lot more information. Um, but if you're but this is a very good one as well because it's going to kind of dive deep into like field goal attempts, how many they're doing per game versus their opponents. So you're gonna see that information. So I'm gonna add this tile in. And so we can see this here. I'm gonna move this to page two. Uh, move to page two because I wanna show something with this as well. So if we come back here to team stats, with this team stat comparison, another thing we can do, and you can do this for all the tiles, as well as toggle between the teams. So right now I have it pulling, um, you know, my opponent versus all their opponents, but I can also choose my myself here. So now if I add this tile in, now I'm getting what we do. So what Ohio State does, what the, our, what Ohio, so my team, my team's opponents, um, what our opponents do against us sets, and then also seeing this for, you know, who we're playing and what their opponents do against them. So it's a great comparative thing that you can do is be able to put this on the page next to each other and be able to see that information accordingly. Now the same thing is going to work with these team stat splits. Um, be able to take this information. Um, you know, you're gonna be able to, this one is by I think our most comprehensive tile in terms of what you can add in. You can add in a lot of different splits. So all games, last five wins, losses, last season, conference, non-conference. You know, I think a lot of times I'm going to see, I see teams use um, all games and conference. Um, that's kind of the common one to use. Um, sometimes even defensive splits. So what they, this would be what their opponents do against them. So maybe all, also what their opponents are doing in those particular sessions. You can kind of choose the stats in the same way. So where you can't really customize the stats in the team stat comparison, you can here in the team stat splits. So I'm going to add that tile in. You can kind of see how it looks. Um, it's a great overview of those particular stats. Now, another feature that you can do if you want to keep those that exact same settings, 
is you can kind of, is you can update with this duplicate. So I want to create that same tile, come in here, and then I can always go in and update anything I want to update. So in this case, I want to switch it to Ohio State instead of Michigan State, come in here, and now we're seeing Ohio State's team stats. So I would just type into the title here, view team stats, and then opponent. Team stats. So what's great about this is getting a nice comprehensive overview of both teams. You can see that they're both different in here. Um, you know, what you're doing and being able to compare it to the stats of what your opponent is doing. So you're really getting, um, you know, utilizing the fact that we have all that data in the system, whatever you want to look at, whatever you want to look like. I've seen a lot of teams do stuff like this. So I always want to make sure to kind of show that on paper for you. Um, our last few stats um, here in the team stats are our advanced stats, um, clutch stats and lineup stats, which we again go over pretty in depth in our advanced stats webinar, um, which is again on YouTube and we're going to probably have another session or two coming up in the next uh, few weeks, um, specifically kind of going into advanced stats and specifically these ones. Of these ones, I really, I really like all of them as a stats nerd myself, um, clutch stats, seeing what they're, what the stats are in the last few minutes of a game, you know, when the score is close. Um, so you can kind of get the box score stats, see what that team is going to be doing at that particular time. And then lineup stats um, is your different amount of lineups. So five man lineups, you know, how many minutes they've played and the different stats, you know, while that, that particular lineup is on the floor and you can customize your lineup size. So if you don't want to see three man, two man or woman lineups, um, you can do so accordingly. All right, I'm gonna take a second to ask for questions. Um, pause, um, make sure we're all on the same page. Um, if not, then we're gonna dive into personnel next. Cool, all right, we'll, uh, we'll continue on here. Um, so let's talk about personnel. You know, this is going to be, I think, is always the bread and butter of scouting reports. And I think people, I think there's a lot of things and a lot of cool things you can do with this, um, especially now we have a, we've, we've been able to put a lot of options into this. Um, and what's really nice, again, about seeing it directly on the page as it is, is you can kind of customize it right in front of you. Um, so the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to choose the stats that you want to use um, for your players. So especially at the beginning of a, of a season, we often see teams use last season stats. You know, later on in the season, it's gonna be all games in conference or, or maybe all games in last five. But I'm gonna start with last season in all games. So it's going to be, this will end up being 18-19 and then 19-20. Um, next year, it's obviously gonna be 19-20 and 2021. Um, then you'll choose the stats that you wanna use. Um, and you'll see all your different options, kind of in the same way we saw in the box score, you can kind of customize it the way you want it to look. Now there's some cool information that you can do um, with, you know, here with the players. I'm just gonna select a few players to begin with, um, you know, a couple of their main players. So I'm just gonna select four, you know, most of, what's nice about a template is the amount of players that you put on the page is the amount that's gonna automatically default to add in. So if you have, you know, if you're going to be put on, put between eight and 10, I recommend putting 10 on the page and then kind of just removing the ones you don't need to have on there. Um, or you can put on nine. And then if you ever need to add one more, you can add one more or how many ever you kind of most of the time do. I would select that many here. Um, again, this is when you're building a template. This is only kind of that first step. Um, our default information is number, name, position, height, and class. And then for men's basketball also includes weight. Women's basketball does not by default include weight. Um, and then you're going to be able to put in any custom information that you want. So oftentimes we see people put in, you know, custom information like right-handed or left-handed or, you know, maybe a, you know, professional player that they kind of are similar to that their game kind of models. You know, we see a lot of teams use that custom info for that, um, which I'll show you um, here in a little bit as well. So I'm gonna add those tiles in and we can see that we added all four of those players directly to our page. Um, 
what's nice is this is just kind of the default way it looks. Um, you can cut all these tiles on the inside here are all customizable and you can kind of make them look the exact way you want it to look. Um, with text tiles, um, they're always going to be in paragraph format. So if you want to do two columns or something like that, what I recommend doing is adding a second one in here and then dragging this over and placing it where you want it. So let's move that right back up. And so now I have the second text tile right here. I can drag and move over like this. And now I can type in this one. So if I have like tendencies and how to defend, I can easily type in both of them. So I'll just do that, tendencies, how to defend, or however you want, whatever text or content you want to put in there, you're going to be able to do that. Um, I'm going to show you our newest feature as well that we've added in is our shot charts. So I'm going to make these all a little bit smaller, kind of give myself room on that right hand side there. Um, according like that, like this, drag this over. So just giving myself a little bit more room. So I have that blank area on the right to add the shot chart in. So now that shot chart populates there can simply just drag and drop, place it there, and then change the size. So again, how we saw on the page, like that first page when you're messing around with text tiles and the different stat tiles and how they're dynamic on a page, personnel tiles have all of their different subtiles that are dynamic in that particular, um, in that particular tile. So it's great to be able to get all that information in there for you. Um, again, you can change the size, the way they look, et cetera. Um, right there for you. And then we can see that. Now, what I always recommend doing is getting one particular tile the way you want it. So let's say this is exactly how I want that, that tile to look. I could come in here, hit apply player layout, copy it to everybody. And now all that tile formatting that I did goes up and applies to everybody else as well. So you can see that everybody is now looking the exact same way on all their different, um, so it's putting the shot chart there, it's putting those two text tiles, it's changing the shape of the, um, uh, the stat style in, in the same way that I did for that original one. So really, you're, when you're building your template, you're gonna try to get a personnel tile to look exactly how you want it to look, and then you can apply it to all the other ones. Um, and a third thing that I recommend doing is also saving the tile. So if you save this tile, I can just call this Michigan State Personnel. And now if I go to my save tiles down here, I'm gonna have access to be able to put that Michigan State Personnel tile into a different scouting report um, or even this one. So if I come in here, hit Michigan State Personnel, I can just come in and easily add a player. So I'll just select player and it's gonna pop up with right here. And I'll be able to you know, add Xavier Tillman or something like that um, right into the, into the report. So that's another way to do that. What's nice is that save tile goes to other reports. So if you only have maybe eight by default on your report, you need to add another one in, come in here to save tiles, boom, you can add it in. Um, it's important to note though, also with the size of these tiles, um, you can obviously change how big and small they are. Simply drag and drop that corner to change the size. Um, the automatic default is to fit five per page plus a little extra space um, for you. Um, if you do need to kind of change, you know, maybe add one line to one particular player, that's the default size. You know, I see teams do a range from, you know, only having two personal players per page or trying to get all 10 on a page. You know, it's, I see a lot of different things, but you can kind of control the size, make them smaller, make them bigger, whatever you want to do. Um, with this as well, there's a couple other things. Um, you can format the tiles. So you can kind of make the header size, you can make it smaller. If you want to make it smaller, you can see that that text gets smaller. Um, and the same thing with like text size, that's going to change the size of the stats box. So you can kind of change the way they all look. Um, if you need to make it bigger or smaller, some people like to make it bigger so it's easier to see and read when it's on a page. You know, some people want to make it smaller so they can fit 
a lot more on a per on just one page. So it's there for both of you, um, for both types of things. And then you can also change the colors as well that are in there. All right, jump back in. All right, I'll run. I'm going to pause the, here again uh, for any questions, and then I'm going to run through my my last segment part for this part is going to kind of run through the rest of uh, the tiles um, that you have available. All right, making it easy on me. Cool. Um, all right, our leader styles are pretty simple. Um, this is going to pull the amount of play, how many ever you will, amount of players that are either the best or worst at a particular stat. So you can see that it's basically a lot of your box, the same st stats we saw on the box scores. So points, field goal made, field goal percentage, field goal percentage for scores, three point shooters is three point made, attempted, and rate, free throw shooters, free throw made, attempted, free throw rate, um, percentage as well, rebounds, ball control, defense, et cetera. So I'm going to show, I'm going to show free throw shooters. The number of rows is the amount of players that are going to show. So if we scroll down here to the bottom, it's showing five players because five rows. If you make it six, it's going to show six, et cetera. The minimum free throw attempt is either done by average or totals. And that's simply done by clicking right here. So I switched it from average to totals by just clicking on that particular stat. And now you can see that the free throw, um, the minimum is by totals. So I, I recommend this way, and then you can put in 10. That means they had to shoot 10 free throws for the season um, or for whatever split you choose in the games tab here. They've had to shoot 10 free throws. If maybe you want it to be, if you want it by averages, so it's going to be the average showing up, you know, you can set it that they have to average at least shooting 0.5 free throws per game um, to be able to qualify for this stat. So you can see everybody here um, has shot at least half of averages, at least half a free throw per game. Then you're gonna be able to kind of choose the stats that you want in there. Um, to the desk, you can have it by decimal points or by whole numbers. When you're ready, you can add that in. And then you can see right now I'll have it sorted by free throw made and attempted. So how many they've attempted per game. I can sort by percentage as well. And I can either do it by best. So now it's shortened by best to worst, or I can, I can do it the other way by just clicking on the column. And now it's going from worst to best. That qualify um, for them at least have a half attempted free throw per game. And then you can easily change this title here to be worst free throw shooters instead of best free throw shooters. And you can add up obviously multiple of these. If I duplicate it, I can come in here, switch it the other way, and then have it be, you know, best free throw shooters instead. Um, and that's the way it works for all the different leader styles for all the different stats. Um, recent games, pretty simple one. Um, show what we have it default to show last five. You can choose six, seven, how many ever you want to show. Add that tile in, and it's just going to default to show what their recent games were, what they did in those games, etc. Depth chart is going to be a quick and easy way to be able to put a depth chart in your scouting report. Come in here. Um, you can choose, you know, who's their starter, who's their backup, and you'll be able to choose right from their roster be able to place it directly in um, to that scouting report. Um, and you can toggle what the position headers are. So we have a default to one, two, three, four, five. If you want it by abbreviated position names or full position names, you can do so as well. Custom table, um, this is going to be a blank table for you. I think we often see like starting matchups and stuff like that. You know, this is a great one to utilize that save tiles for and be able to save something. Um, so I'll kind of show a couple examples of what I've done. So matchups is one. Uh, what if I can add it into oh, right here. So we see our starting matchups. I, you know, I have it as our starters and then opponent starters. You can be able to easily just type in the information. So our starter being, you know, whoever is the starting for players for your team, and then the starting players from from the opponent team. Just type them right in. Um, another one that I have is like play calls. So if I come in here to save tiles, hit the play calls, you know, that's another one. You can see that comes right up here. You know, 
what time we're using it and what we want the play call to be. You know, you can have as many rows and columns in here that you want. Um, it just gives you, um, you know, a couple of ideas to be able to put into your scouting report. All right. Um, and lastly, let's talk about our two newest features that we've added over the course of this season, um, and that's shot charts. Um, so that's going to be a hex zone, make miss, you know, whatever one you want to do, and you can do it um, as team or player. So I'm just going to add each one of those in so we can kind of see them. And then looks like we're overlapping the page. So that red border indicates we're going over the page. So I'm just going to quickly move this down um, to page five. So that's loading. So that's the hex chart. It's nice. It's going to kind of give you the concise information. This is my favorite one because it's not only showing you volume by how big the hex is, but it's also showing you the um, their ability at that particular one. So they shoot below average uh, from the left side here, from the left wing three um, left and left corner, um, but they're obviously very good down low. Um, and these are, um, and the averages for these are based on league averages. So it'll be over the course of division one, you know, what they do in comparison. Um, the other ones that we have there are zone. So I'll add the zone chart. This is one you've probably been familiar with in the past. And um, our sh and the last one is a make miss chart. You know, this one works a lot better um, on smaller sample sizes, especially on per game. Um, but you'll be able to see the red X's mean they missed, the green circles made they ma mean they made from that particular one. You know, this is a good one to see, you know, maybe on a particular game basis. So if I'm scouting them, you know, I don't want any selected. I just want the verse Ohio State. You know, I can choose that and it's going to update accordingly, maybe. I didn't do it. So verse Ohio State, save tile. All right, for some reason it's not updating. Let's try it again this way. Make miss games versus Ohio State. That tile. All right, that looks like it's a bug of some kind. I'll have to look into that more. But that is a way you can do that uh, for just that particular thing. Um, last area here is the plays. And that's going to be a way to bring in your plays directly from Fast Draw into your scouting report. So this is pulling up all the season team series, et cetera, from Fast Draw. You can easily filter in the same way that you've been able to filter in Fast Draw. When you're ready, you can bring the plays in. It will bring in the videos that you've attached if you've attached any videos to those plays. And you can add those directly into your scouting report as well. Um, and what's cool about this is you can kind of change it frames per row um, if you want maybe three frames per row. So you can kind of see the play um, differently depending on what you want to do. All right, so once you've done all that, kind of gotten the way you want it to look, it's gonna be super easy. You're gonna hit this create template button and I'm just gonna call this webinar template um, so we can save that. And now moving forward, if I choose a different team, it's gonna populate those, um, those settings into the new scouting report. So before I do that and kind of some of the workflows from an existing scouting report. Does anybody have any questions? I see nothing's been asked yet, um, but I wanna make sure just in case um, there are anything on building a template. You know, that's a lot of stuff to cover in a short amount of time. All right, I will continue. All right, so we built our we built our template. Now we want to use our, um, you know, you know, build our reports based on that template. So we'll call this a practice one, and we'll make this one about Indiana instead. And now all we'll do is go to our save templates here and choose this webinar template and create it. And now we'll see as it loads, it's loading all of the exact same settings. So it's choosing the theme that we did in the design. Um, it's taking the fact that we have our skinny headers on page two. It's taking our different stats like points. We sorted by points on the right hand side here. It's taking all those settings and just applying it for this new team. So moving forward, now let's say I wanted to change maybe a setting on here. Maybe wanted to make this conference games instead. 
all I'll do, come into settings and just select conference games and hit save. And now it's only pulling from those particular games um, for that one. And if I want to update my template. So if I make the changes, it's going to be for this particular template or for this particular report. If I want to make them to the template, all I'll do is come in here, hit create template, and I can update my template. So you can either make changes specifically to a report, but now if you want these for all your ones moving forward, just hit update existing template, um, and it's going to update that accordingly. So now if I created a new template, it's only going to be pulling in conference games, or made a new report, it's only going to be pulling in conference games um, in the box score. So it's really easy to kind of make changes and have that go moving forward, but sometimes you don't want to make changes, you only want to make it for one particular report, and so you can do that as well. So you can kind of see, you know, we have our different stats, the team way it's compared, opponent team stats, OSU stats. Um, you can see that they're different like that. You know, we had our, our scouting report. It populates, you know, the exact same personnel tiles, you know, with the tenant, even keeps the text that you want to keep in. It'll keep that in there. So if you want maybe a header for your text, like tendencies and how to defend, you can do that. Or you can leave it blank um, like we did for these ones. Um, so it's not going to do that. Um, for personnel stuff, um, one of the cool things is it's going to automatically populate everybody by minutes played. So you can see that Justin Smith averaged 30, um, Trace Jackson Davis averaged 29, Aljami Durham averaged 26. That's how they're going to automatically populate in there is by order of minutes. If you ever want to change who the order that people are in, simply come in here, hit reorder player tiles, and you can change the order. So maybe I want to put you know, some guards up near the top. And then, you know, maybe one in that order instead, you can easily just hit save and it's going to update the order accordingly. So now Rob Finnessy, AJ Durham, Justin Smith, it's going kind of in the order that you want them to, um, instead of, you know, the order that's by default. Um, and again, if you want to make any changes or anything, you can easily do so. And then you can still utilize that apply player layout. Um, if you want to. Um, sometimes maybe, you know, there's an injured player. He's still averaging a lot of minutes. He or she is still averaging a lot of minutes. You know, you want to remove that particular player. So maybe this player is injured. You want to remove and add somebody else instead. You can come in here to settings and then switch to a different player. So I'm just going to choose uh, Deron Davis instead. Hit save. And now it's changed from Justin Smith to Deron Davis. Um, that's a you know, a, a, a work functionality that you might need throughout the season. Um, and then, you know, we mentioned being able to add, um, add in players with that save tile functionality. You can do so, you know, we saved it as Michigan State personnel, but just come in here, you can add that in. Do I add it to page four? So you can see that players right here. Um, and you can easily move to page three if you need to. Up there and now it's a little over the page but oh well select your player um, again just go to the settings tab here go settings and then you can choose we'll just choose Justin Smith again and it's populating that exact all those settings that we saved you know you at, need to add that ninth tenth or eleventh person in to so the scouting report that's a great way to do it Um, and then again, it saves all your like matchup stuff. So all you have to do, come in here and type your information in. Um, if you save your starters in there, it's even going to save that information. And then you could only need to write in the opponent starters. Um, and then I'll kind of just show through all the way down to the end of the report. Um, so you can kind of see the plays. So the plays are going to default as the same plays that we saw before. Um, but you can easily come in here, go to settings and you're gonna be able to change the play. So it's pulling up the, all your plays again, come here, switch to a different play, and now it's switching to high three over instead of the one that was in there. Um, and again, you can still easily, you know, toggle between frames for out and stuff like that. Um, any questions on anything we did there? You know, this is a, you know, throughout the season, that update existing template, is a big functionality that's going to help you, especially when you're switching stats, you know, from, you know, early in the season, you're probably using last season stats. You need to start using this season. 
you know, go in there, quick update, and then hit update existing template. Um, you know, util utilize that update existing template. Same thing with, you know, going from all games to conference, going from, you know, mid season to conference season, you want to update for conference stats. Maybe you include an extra line item for conference stats for players or something like that. You know, it's a great way to be able to kind of update it easily. And then moving forward, it's going to do, it's going to do that. Um, I want to show one more thing with personnel um, here. That's kind of a little tip and trick um, that, you know, I've util that I like to utilize. Um, and it's being able to kind of customize different players. So when we come in here to settings, there's this option to bulk edit personnel tiles. So right now, the only player I'm changing any stat settings for or anything is, is Rob Finnessy, but I can change it to see either select all, or maybe I want to just switch guards, right? So, um, I can unselect and then just choose Rob and Aljami. And I think they're the only guards. Maybe we'll just do Devonte green as well. Um, maybe they're the three point shooters and I only want to show them for three point shooting. So I want to kind of focus on three point stats. You know, I can add those, but maybe I'm not as focused on, you know, rebounding and blocks, um, and other ones maybe. Um, so I want to kind of focus on those particular stats. I can easily save it at that point. And now it's updating those particular stats for those players, but not for the other players. So you can easily, you know, tailor your stats to individual players um, really easily through that bulk edit. Um, and that works not just for stats, that also works for the custom text as well. So I mentioned before, sometimes this custom, sometimes people like to put left-handed and right-handed. You know, let, I think um, all of them are right-handed except for AJ Durham. You know, I'm just going to unselect AJ Durham and I'm going to put it in right-handed and then hit save. And now, oops, I forgot I actually added it. Oops. So let's do that again. Bulk edit personnel tiles, you know, um, and select everybody with AJ Durham. Type in right-handed and hit that plus button. Now you can see it down here at the bottom and then hit save. And now you can see that it's in for everybody except for Aljami Durham. Go through, do, 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 see it all in there. Now you can add in for him or in, in all the other left-handers, come in here, hit settings. You know, it's just, since it's just him in this report, I can come in here, hit left-handed, type that in, add it in and hit save. And now it's populating left-handed for him. So you can save, you know, right-handed and left or left-handed into the into this into the scouting report, and then just go in there and switch all the ones you need to from right-handed to left-handed if need be. So that's cool ways to kind of customize, you know, what you're looking at. So again, for like the bigs with the stats, come in here, bulk edit, and then we'll just unselect, oops, unselect the guards. And then, you know, we'll focus for these particular ones. We're going to focus more on rebounding and the blocks and not as much on steals and assists and turnovers. Um, and three point, you know, we can get rid of that as well. You know, and then down here at the bottom, kind of organize it the way we want to organize it. And hit save. And then for them, we're only seeing those particular stats. So it's a great way to be able, I'm just kind of going through an idea here to kind of customize your scouting reports and to make it look specifically the way you want it to look. Awesome. Uh, I'm gonna pause one last time for questions. Cool. And then um, I'm going to kind of run through just a couple, two templates that I have in here um, that I kind of like, you know, first is our, these are kind of one pagers. Um, so this is a, this is our bench report. We have this template by default in your system. Um, this is a great one pager to be able to print out, bring onto your, um, you know, onto the bench, be able to work straight from, um, right, work straight from there. So it kind of monitors teams, players. So you would just type in, you know, your players into here play calls, and then you'll also see best three-point shooters and worst free throw shooters for your opposing team. And this other one's a, a nice one for landscape, to be able to see it on, lands, in, on landscape mode instead. So I have like keys to the game, opponent offense, opponent defense, so you can easily type in there. And then 
um, a few leaders. So what they did in recent games, what they've done, who their best three point shooters, who their best and worst free throw shooters are. And then quick overview of their starters and reserves um, like this. Awesome. Well, that is all for today. Uh, that's all I wanted to really go over. Um, I will hold on here for another minute or two if you have any questions at all. Um, but that would be, that's all I have to go over. Um, so again, thank you for your time. And if you have any questions, please let me know.